Alright guys, so we're here in the back of the shop. We're going to wash this saddle. Um, we've done a video already on how to break a saddle down to do what we call a clean on polish, which is going, going to be going through it and washing it, conditioning the leather, oil and everything, fixing anything that might need to be fixed, and putting it all back together. I'm going to apologize right now if it kind of gets a little noisy. I'll do my best to edit it to where you can hear well. But this is a, this is a saddle here. The video that we did on breaking a saddle down, this is obviously a different saddle. Um, but we're going to show you on this one here. This is one that we got in on trade that we're going to sell So I like to take those and go through them wash them clean them condition them replace anything that needs to be replaced I may or may not replace stirrup leathers on this saddle We'll just kind of clean everything up and then I'll assess it when we go to put it back together We will do a video when we put this saddle back together as far as how I condition the leather clean uh, Or it's already going to be cleaned how I oil the saddle uh, condition the leather, put everything back together, shine any silver or anything like that. So we'll have a, basically when we're done with that video, there'll be three videos with our complete clean oil and polish process that'll show you how I do as far as when I do one, um, kind of what I do. So we're going to get at it. I've already broke it down. We've got the stirrups. I take everything off the saddle that I can. Obviously I don't cut any stitches or anything. We're just tearing it down, getting it ready to wash. This is a tripping saddle for steer tripping. And so what they did was uh, they had a, um, a horn knot on here, a braided horn knot. I cut that off because the latigo wrap that was underneath it was kind of worn and I wanted to replace it. So I just cut that horn knot off and uh, we'll go ahead and put a new latigo cowboy wrap on this saddle when we're done. We'll show you how to do that in that video as well. Um, I did take the latigo tie strap off too. You can leave these on like the billets on the saddle. I leave those on and wash them while they're on here. But this latigo, um, I just, it needed to be relaced and I wanted to kind of see how this bend looked and it looks a little weak, so we may probably replace that. But I've got all that, um, all the parts, and we're gonna set those over here on this rack, uh, rack here that's not in the shop. But um, it's good to have a little area where you can hang stuff to let it dry once you've got done washing things. So set you up a little, little rack or pegs on the wall or something like that. In the old shop, we had a, a board here with a bunch of long pegs on there, and so you could hang things like fenders, tie straps, stirrups. You could hang them as you got, got them done being washed. Um, fenders and stirrup leathers, I pulled those completely out. Like I said, these, these aren't too bad. I may just leave these in this saddle and, uh, and, and go ahead and sell them used with these in there. Would, like I said, we'll just kind of clean them and go from there. I'm going to set these off to the side, and, um, and then, of course, I've got the, the housings the back housing's out and so we'll set that over there so this saddle everything is loose we don't peel the seat up we we'll leave it glued down but um, if it comes up no problem you can always re-glue it but i like to be able to get all up underneath this seat as far as i can and get this saddle as clean as possible and so i don't have a lot of excess in my way um, then inside here i've got all the little bits so we've got um, blevin sleeves all the strings, hobble straps, rig catchers, conchos, all of that stuff. When you do one of these, you may replace some of the conchos or the rig catchers, stuff like that may be worn out. The strings, if they're dry and crusty, you might just cut those off the saddle and put new ones on when you put it back together. Um, these strings are actually really good and we've actually gone through the saddle about a year, two years ago probably. And so all those parts I've already replaced once. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use them again and we'll clean them and i'll show you how i kind of kind of do that as well we'll set those down there so they're out of the way and basically saddle is sitting on our rack if you watch our monday morning briefing you saw this we just got this old piece of sheepskin here just so the saddle sits a little more securely but it's just real simple it's just a little a-frame thing that i slide up and down the rail of this tub my tub if you haven't seen that it's just as you can tell it's just a porcelain tub uh, an old claw foot tub and the feet have been taken off of it and then it's uh, on a pipe frame and that's just to get it up higher so that you don't have to um, bend over as much and it's easier on your back and then it's got a drain and here I don't have it piped into the actual sewer system or anything so I've just got a discharge hose that I run out into the grass it's just open water so we just kind of water the grass when we, when we do wash saddle we just kind of move around and water the grass then I've got a little short water hose here with a nice sprayer on the end of it. And I like to use the shower, uh, gentle shower setting on here or whatever, just so the water doesn't 
spray back at me as much, but having a good sprayer is good. Um, a lot of guys will take these to a pressure washer and um, really spray them off really good, like at a car wash or something. You can sure do that. Just be careful because some of those pressure washers and at the car wash place and stuff, they spray really, really hard and they can damage the leather as far as scratch it sometimes, um, depending on the condition of the leather and stuff. So I'd just kind of be a little careful with that. And a few of the things you're gonna need, you're gonna need a bucket. And so any bucket will do. You're gonna need a various assortment of little scrubbers. I do have one that's a kind of a softer wire brush. That works good on saddles that have a really, really caked on film of arena dirt and oil and arena dirt and oil. Um, or, or just stuff like that, dust and stuff. Sometimes this will work. Again, you've gotta be real careful with these little soft wire brushes because you will scratch uh, that leather sometimes. So I try not to use that unless I absolutely have to. Then I've got um, toothbrushes. Those are always good to have for getting into areas like this as you'll see in a minute. And um, just kind of any dollar store, they've got all kinds of little brushes and stuff. And so I just kind of buy whichever ones because different shapes, different sizes, you never know what you might need when you're cleaning these things up. So I just keep a little bit of an assortment and I'll usually just kind of keep them in the tub so I can reach and grab them as I need them. And um, I'm gonna go from there. And then the soap that I use is Dawn dish soap. So our saying in the shop is usually, if this is good enough for baby ducks, it's good enough for saddles. So some of y'all might not be old enough to remember that, but um, had a few oil spills where Dawn dish soap was a, uh, their stock went up because they were using it to clean off uh, ducks and birds and, and uh, that kind of thing, seagulls and stuff that were covered with oil. But anyway, any kind of soap will work. You can use ivory dish soap, you can use this. I have used Murphy's oil soap. Murphy's oil soap works really good. Um, it's got some oil in it. And so the thing you've got to remember when you're washing a saddle is you are going to be pulling the dirt off the saddle and rinsing it, and in doing that, you're also pulling oil out of the leather, the natural oil that's in the leather. But, because um, a lot of people will want to use a saddle soap or a saddle glycerin. Saddle glycerin, saddle soap, that is not really a soap. It is a soap by definition, but it's not a soap to clean with, because the, technically you're supposed to lather that saddle up and leave the suds on there until the saddle dries. So you're putting glycerin back into the saddle or into the leather. And that, um, the way, it, the, the, the consistency that it is and how it's made is technically a soap, but it's not a detergent soap. It's not going to remove the, the dirt and grime off the leather. And that's what I'm after when I clean one. I'm not worried about losing some oil because we will lose some oil using a soap like this, but we're going to, within a couple of days, depending on how fast it dries, we're going to recondition it. So that's fine. If you washed it and with this, let it dry and just went to riding it and then washed it again six or eight months later with this and let it dry and just kept riding it and you never oil it, yes, you will dry that saddle out because this is actually removing the oil from the leather. Um, that's a big misconception. A lot of people think you have to use a saddle soap. I don't use any saddle soap when I'm washing a saddle. We used to have it as a step once we got it cleaned with this or ivory or something like that. Then we would go back and use the glycerin soap and lather it up and then let it dry with that on there. Um, with using olive oil and skidmores, as you'll see in the next video, I don't feel that that step is needed. So that's just my personal preference. I don't use glycerin saddle soap at all on uh, my clean oil and polishes, but that's just me. But again, any kind of dish soap, you can use any of them. Palm olive, it's supposed to be good on your hands. You can try that, I don't care. Doesn't really matter. Just want, don't want to use anything that's that's super super caustic. I, I like Dawn because it's uh, my wife actually used this on the on the racehorse farm when they're sales prepping uh, yearlings and stuff for sales. They would uh, bathe all those horses with just Dawn, and it's just a good soap. Works fine. It's cheap. You can go buy it anywhere. If you run out, you can run down to the dollar store, or H E B, or Kroger, or whatever your your uh, grocery store is, and pick up some more. You don't have to order it from some special leather soap company. So. Uh, but that's what we're gonna do. And we'll go ahead right now and we're gonna fill our bucket and get everything ready so we can start washing this. All right, so we've got our bucket and I'm just gonna put a bunch of soap in there. Um, it doesn't really matter how much soap, you just need a pretty good amount of soap. It's uh, just like washing anything else, your truck or anything else. Just wanna be sure you've got plenty of soap in there.
All right, so what I like to kind of do first is go ahead and just rinse it. Um, if you've got a lot of dust in there, if you're washing a lot of cowboy saddles and stuff, you might have a lot of excess just dust on there, dirt. If it'll rinse off, great. But I like to give it just a little bit of a rinse. The saddles mainly, you know, most your roping saddles and arena saddles, you're gonna have a lot of arena dirt in there. So I like to just kind of rinse that off if we can. Get us a little head start. And don't worry about soaking the saddle down. Um, it is not gonna hurt these saddles to get wet. That's what they're made for. So these saddles will be very wet by the time we're done. A lot of people think you can't get them wet or the rough out, you're not supposed to get it wet or anything. Just, you're washing a saddle, it's gonna get wet, the whole thing. I try not to saturate the sheepskin, but it's gonna get wet too. It's not a big deal, just be sure that you're letting them dry in an area that's pretty well ventilated. Um, so that you don't get a less chance of getting some mold. You might see some mold in either way um, as you get going. Now I just get my scrubber, whichever one you like to use, and I just start, just like washing anything else, just start scrubbing. This saddle's gonna be fairly easy, this saddle's gonna be fairly easy to wash because it's not tooled. If they're tooled, you're gonna have to scrub. Sometimes you're gonna get the toothbrush out and try to get all your areas. That's gonna take a lot of scrubbing, rinsing, seeing where you're at, scrub, rinse, see where you're at. Just the goal here is to get the dirt and grime off the saddle. And so how, whatever you gotta do to do that without damaging the leather too much is fine. These, these soft bristle brushes are fine. You can scrub pretty good with them. Um, you know, it's, it's not gonna hurt them. If the saddle that you're washing is very, very brittle and the leather's like flaking off and coming off, that's dry rot going on. That saddle was mistreated and there's nothing you can do about that. You can try to be a little more tender with it and hopefully not hurt it, but it doesn't matter that you're cleaning it because the saddle's already too far gone. And so if you see pieces of leather starting to come off or, you know, in the tooling, I've had it where pieces of it, it's just like, it almost looks like you're grating the leather off. Um, that's not good. Now that means the saddle's already a little too far, too far gone. So um, on a good saddle that's been conditioned properly and is in good shape, you shouldn't have any problem scrubbing this saddle. Um, pretty, pretty hard just to, do, to get the dirt and stuff off. Um, underneath the seat as far as I can. Try to scrub your hardware. A lot of times this, uh, the D-rings and stuff will have grime stuck on them. Now's a good time to just kind of try to get that off as you can. Sometimes you've got to take a little scraper and scrape that off the metal, but we try to clean that too. Be sure to get underneath your gullet area in here that usually catches a lot of grime. I like to lift my rigging up. You can see all the grime that's stuck underneath there. Try to get all that. You see how dirty that soapy water is right there. Try to get all that out of there. So we're gonna take this toothbrush here and we're gonna clean the candle back. Now this is a tripping saddle, so the candle back is very short, but I use a toothbrush on almost all of them just because it's so much easier, especially if they have a Cheyenne roll, you can get up underneath there. There's probably another brush out there that would work better, but that's just what we've always used. 
just get you a nice hard hard bristled toothbrush and it'll last you a pretty good while and then you can get really under there the thing to look for here when you're cleaning somebody's saddle is there's almost always at least in texas there's going to be some dirt daubers underneath there if they're uh what we call weekenders where they don't ride very often um their saddle sets more than it gets ridden so unfortunately them dirt daubers always looking for a place to build a home and so they will build underneath here so um somebody pays you to clean a saddle you don't want to send it out and have them find a dirt dauber nest under there it doesn't look like you did a very thorough job so be sure and always check under there the form is still just a little bit grimy looking and then if you're happy with this side i kind of do one side and then flip her around and do the other side but if you're happy with the way it looks, I turn my water pressure down. It's very, this town's got very good water pressure. It blows all over the place if I have it too high. But if you, uh, if you're happy the way it looks, go ahead and just rinse all that soap off. And you can kind of look and check, make sure that you don't have any big patches. Of, it'll almost look like a gray film if there's a film on the leather. Um, that stuff can be really hard to get off. And I have in the past used a little bit of acetone, wipe it down with a little bit of acetone and then, then scrub it. I found though on the last one that I did, that's why I have that little softer wire bristled brush because that actually works a little better. I don't like putting acetone on my leather if I don't have to. It's pretty pretty hard on it. But sometimes that, what I call arena film, um, and what it is is it's layers of dirt and grime and arena dirt and then they oil right over it or whatever and it just creates this layer of really hard film that you can't hardly, you can't hardly scrub it off. Um, and so, Sometimes a little acetone or something will break that loose, but I don't recommend using that. I, I mean, if you are gonna use it, use it, use it sparingly, but I would recommend kind of just using that wire brush. It, it's a very, that wire brush, again, is like one of these. It's a very soft bristled wire brush. It's not a wire brush you'd clean your barbecue grill off with or to, uh, you know, sand off or, or, or brush off your welds or anything. It's a pretty soft wire bristle brush, but still be careful with it because it will scratch that leather really, really good if you're not careful. So now I've got this side completely rinsed. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around. Now attack this side and do the same thing. We'll go ahead and give her a little rinsing. If I can get any loose dirt. Baby powder, lots of baby powder on calf saddles. You know, that stuff causes a problem too sometimes because it gets caked on there. So, if I can get it kind of, get it a little wet right first and kind of seems like it'll scrub off a little easier. The saddle's actually got a little, little dirt dubby right there. So, take that. Take our brush and start back. Just like we did on the other side.
All right, so that part of the saddle is done. We're gonna go ahead and move it over here to the rack. All right, so now the saddle itself is done. So now we'll start washing off all the little part or the bigger parts the next step down, which is gonna be your housings, uh, fender stirrups or stirrups, and then we'll wash the little stuff last. And so I'm gonna do the same to this piece here. And just spray it off a little bit. I'm going to grab a brush. I'm doing the same thing we did to the side. We're just going to scrub it, try to get it as clean as possible. You can see all the dirt and nasty that's coming off of there. What I want to do, I want to get that off and away from the leather so that it'll take oil really good. You want to be sure to rinse that soap off really good. Don't leave that on there. It's not going to kill it. It's not going to hurt anything, but you got to remember it's carrying dirt. So the more of it you can rinse off, the more dirt you're getting out of those fibers. And that leather will take oil much better. So those are fairly clean. So we'll put those over here on the rack. And we'll do the fenders. If you are replacing stirrup leathers on a saddle, as well as cleaning one, I suggest taking the stirrup leathers off and just washing the fenders by themselves. Save your stirrup leathers so you know what length you need if you are replacing them. Um, if you didn't know that, save those so you know how long to cut them. But it's a lot easier to wash these if you have these off of here. But I'm still undecided on whether I'm going to replace them or not. So, because I just replaced them not too long ago and they really don't look too terrible. So I'm going to leave them on. It just makes it a little more difficult to wash them. Fenders and stirrup leathers are always the most worn piece on a saddle as far as being the dirtiest. Um, especially back here in this corner, this leather will usually be pretty hard. So I try to wash that really, really good and get some of that sweat out of there. Because uh, that's up against the horse and so it just catches a lot of abuse. So we want to be sure and clean that really good. soap here because we got a uh, getting our water pretty dirty I like to check my blevins buckles when I'm in here as well and just make sure those rivets look okay. That one looks loose right there. So I'm probably gonna take those out and reseat those. If I don't, if I don't replace stir bladders, I'm gonna at least do that. But when you're washing a saddle, it's a good opportunity for you to go ahead and notice little things like that that you wouldn't have looked at unless you tore that saddle down. So always be sure that you've got your eye open for anything that may be broke that they don't know about or that you might not have looked at otherwise. too. These are wood stirrups, so we want to wash the wood as well to so get any kind of ground. These are a pair of those Duke stirrups from Nettles that we talked about in our Monday briefing video. 
a couple weeks ago and uh, they're really nice. Just a good use of syrup. Your stirrups are really, really nasty. You can certainly set them in that bucket for a little while. And let them let that mud soak up a little bit, and it'll wash off a little easier. Just be careful if you got wood stirrups. Don't want to soak them too long? And this tie strap, I'm not going to save it. I'm I'm going to save it just for me or whatever, but I'm not going to put it back on that saddle. I'm going to go ahead and keep it off of there. It's done its job. I think this is the original the original uh, tie strap that we put on that saddle back when we built it probably eight or nine years ago. So it's done its job. I'm going to go ahead and retire it. Now, here we have all our little parts. Like I said before, I saved the strings because I think they're in good shape. They're not dry rot. They all came unbled real easy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean them and use them. But I'm not going to scrub them. What I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to take them and I'm going to put them in this bucket right here and give them a washing machine effect. Do that right there. Let them soak up just a little bit. It's just too hard to try to scrub a saddle string, so I just like to agitate them in that soapy water and then let them set in there for a little bit while we wash some other stuff. And then we'll take them out and we might wipe them off a little bit and then rinse them off. Cobble straps. As far as these catchers and stuff, they're a little, a little bit harder to wash sometimes because they're so small, but just however works for you. Like when I'm washing a concho or a rosette, I usually hold it in my hand and make a cup in my hand where it can't move. And then I just kind of scrub like that. That usually does a pretty good job. You know, if they're, if they're bad enough, you can just replace them. These aren't real bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse them. It's the only thing kind of that I don't, I don't like is when you replace them on an old saddle, then you got brand new rosettes on there, it kind of looks goofy. So here's our side strings, and I will just hang those up, let those dry. That kind of ended up end up with kind of a wad of mess here. So that's all the parts, and now we'll just rinse out our tub. Let me 
and you can see how nasty that water is. All that dirt was in that saddle, so. All right, so we got everything washed and cleaned and rinsed, and we brought everything back into the shop. I'm working on setting up an area out there in the warehouse area in the back, back of the shop. Um, I've got one of those racks, you might have saw in one of my videos that we got, had that tech stand deal, and that'll be really good to dry them. I had one saddle that we washed here recently that uh, ended up getting some mold on, and it's still really cold uh, in the mornings and stuff, and I guess at night it's cold enough that it's taking a long time for these things to dry. I kind of want to get this one done so I can get the other video done for you guys showing you how I oil and condition and put back together, and I'd like to get the saddle sold. So we're going to bring it into the shop where the heater stays on, um, all the time it's more climate controlled that way it'll dry a little bit biggest thing when you're letting these saddles dry is be sure you have some airflow one thing that freddie used to do um, at, at the shop in wheelock when he was there and i don't have another one but he would take like a blevin sleeve and put that underneath the seat like that and put one on this side and then he would leave the saddle like that overnight in the shop and that would allow airflow to get under there because what's going to happen is the jockeys you know the jockeys will dry your fenders will dry all that stuff will dry really good and the saddle will look dry but then when you pick the seat up it's going to be really wet under here and if it's wet too long or if you've got a bad mold uh if you got bad mold in your area you'll end up with a lot of mold under here and if you oil it when they're wet you have more of a chance to get mold so be sure and let them dry really really good before you oil them because you don't want to trap any water inside that leather with that oil and, and, and possibly get uh, a, more of a chance to get some mold growth and stuff like that. Mold's not going to hurt the saddle. Um, long term it can. It can stain it. It can do some things. It's actually eating some of the oil and some of the stuff. But um, it's not going to hurt anything. Short term, just wipe it off. No big deal. But you, if you're doing this for a customer that are paying you, um, sometimes they get, they get their feathers up if they get home and then their saddle gets a bunch of mold on it. But mold's a good thing. If you got mold, that means the leather's in good enough condition to uh, support life so that's good but i brought the saddle in here we're gonna let it dry in the shop with the heater on and so we're gonna do that and we're just gonna let it dry i just like to lay everything out to where nothing's like sitting on top of itself or whatever lay it out real nice make sure you got all your parts accounted for and make sure everything's been washed because the worst thing is to go put this thing back together and figure out you didn't wash the stirrups or you didn't wash you know the, the little keepers or something because then you've got to wash them and then let them dry and so that'll put you behind so just kind of do a little a little gander and make sure that you've got all the parts everything's been washed everything's put here um whatever but that's how i wash a saddle that's how i clean one i'm sure a lot of people have different ways a lot of people use a pressure washer that's fine again just be real careful with that if it's pretty strong you can scratch the leather a little bit more with that um, but i know of a lot of guys who say they just take them down the, pre the car wash and just hose them off um, with that thing and, and that's awesome if that's the way you want to do it um, but this is my process this is how I do it and so I hope it helped you the next video we will show you oiling conditioning and reassembly we will also shine these conchos I'll show you how I do that I use a bench grinder with a cloth wheel um, it's the fastest for us but if you've got some really really nice silver obviously and you know about real nice silver um, do it the proper way which is with you know silver cleaner and and polish and stuff like that but but yeah that's it i hope you all enjoyed the video i hope it was informational be sure like i said biggest thing is just get that dirt off of them get them clean just like you would if you're washing a horse or washing your truck get them clean don't worry about getting the saddle wet let it dry really good and we'll see you in the next video when i show you how to put this back together thank y'all